I decided to slightly change main focus on my talk. It will be still on the cardiac modeling. It will be still on cardiac modeling, but I wanted to show you uh, if I have time, three or four very short talks uh, where mathematics was applied to cardiac modeling. Most of this research was done in my group, but I also wanted to highlight a little bit about one research direction, which is developed maybe in the UK. Okay, uh, and let me start with very simple introduction, like very, very few slides, just to know a little bit what we're talking about. You know, the heart is the center of our circulatory system, and the main function of the heart is uh, mechanical contraction. It just pumps blood through the body. But this electrical, uh, this mechanical contraction is initiated by electrical waves which propagate through the heart and which most people know that you can see it on electrocardiogram when you want to feel they show it. And in fact, both like uh, wave propagate, then there is contraction, and this is what we call normal cardiac cycle. However, uh, in some cases, uh, there are pathological situations when uh, cardiac cycle becomes abnormal. And then uh, a person can get arrhythmias. There are many types of arrhythmias. I wouldn't tell you details about that. If you have interest, I can tell you a lot about that. But just to highlight the most important thing, they are at the end of this uh, graph. And two, the most uh, uh, like dangerous and important diseases in uh, cardiac physiology, cardiology, are called atrial fibrillation and uh, ventricular fibrillation. Uh, like uh, uh, ventricular fibrillation basically means sudden cardiac death. This is when uh, this is my when a person uh, dies, uh, sort of they put uh, an electrical shock in it and survive. And uh, uh, death from this disease is still very high. This is from work uh, uh, health organization, some slides of uh, largest causes of death. The first one is ischemic uh, uh, heart disease. And in 90% of cases, uh, people die from cardiac arrhythmia. Second, uh, the most important uh, cause of death is stroke. But it turns out that stroke also in many cases occurs due to cardiac arrhythmia. And this due to this uh, uh, next to last uh, uh, line in my slide, so-called atrial fibrillation. This is not a little disease. But during this disease, atria, upper chambers of the heart, stop contracting, they just shaking. And because there is no normal blood circulation, clots are formed, and this clot can go to brain, etc., and it causes stroke. And I found somewhere that 30%, one third of all deaths from stroke occur in patients with atrial Therefore, this is really a huge uh, problem, and a lot of people are working on it. And uh, this is also things which we study from very, very different directions. A lot of people study. Okay, and then also very dimensional slide, what we see here, so, which explains <laughs> why this uh, unfortunate event occurred. So, what are these electrical waves? Electrical waves, we used to call them as a uh, like forest fire. So uh, somewhere you have a fire which can spread to other parts of the forest. This is a phase of excitation, and the excitation of the heart spread through the fire. Then there is a part when all is burned down and you can't ignite it anymore. It keeps showing in green, but it's like black, so you have no trees anymore. And then, say, after 100 years, uh, trees uh, are kicked up again. Uh, this refractory phase is uh, restored. And the wave can propagate it. So uh, please uh, memorize, uh, I will use it uh, today. This notion of refractory period is a uh, length of this recovery period. And this is very important in the heart. And because of the nonlinear waves in the heart, differ significantly from many other types of nonlinear waves. Okay, and one of the most important things is. The following. If you have, for example, a ring of excitable cardiac tissue, and if you initiate, can initiate a wave which propagates just into one direction, that's what happens. This wave will go here, and it goes, it comes back to the initial point. And if this travel time longer 
there's a recovery time, there's a refractory period. Wait when it comes here again, can propagate again, again, and again. And we will have sustained rotation of weight in the ring. And this is already uh, how a witness has, because if such rotation occurs in the patient, weight rotates very, very fast, heart starts to very, very fast, and this is already a big problem in the case. Now, mathematics, a <laughs> very important thing. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 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 like in order to be able to rotate here in anatomical pathway, we need to satisfy this very, very simple condition that the length of refractory period times velocity of wave propagation, this is minimal length, and if the length of this contour is longer than this, then we can have a sustained rotation. If it is less, then in this setup, this rotation is not possible. Okay. Uh, now, it can be extended to two and uh, three dimensions, and uh, in two dimensions, uh, again, uh, what it is, is, for example, take and start grow this uh, ring here and here. Uh, then you will get a wave rotating around the uh, uh, anatomical optical in two dimensions. Easy to see that this wave can get a spiral shape just because of. Uh, uh, if you need to have constant uh, angular velocity, you need to have some angle uh, with respect to uh, this. Uh, but, but here again, period is defined by the perimeter of uh, this optical. And it was also shown again very long time ago, 80 years ago, that this rotation in two dimensions can occur without any optical. But then what happens that weight can propagate around its own refractory tail. And then it seems that this uh, uh, tissue creates optical itself. And uh, these uh, sources are also possible, but they occur only if you don't have predefined anatomical path, if you, if you can go everywhere. If you have predefined anatomical path, then what I told you before is still working. Okay, and then what people normally say that uh, if you have uh, like uh, one abnormal source of excitation, then it's called a listener cortical fast heartbeat. If many of those, then it's fibrillation, sudden cardiac death, or it is fibrillation. Why? Because when it has many sources, they compete to each other, heart doesn't know which rhythm to take, and then it just fails to contract and so on. And again, for many, many years, uh, like uh, people uh, studied in terms of multi scale uh, heart models, where the correct information from the cell to tissue level and to the coworker, and do a lot of things uh, uh, with this, and uh, yeah, hundred papers, uh, even I have 200 papers. We can read it how many people to open that. Therefore, of course, I will not be able to tell you everything. But I want to tell you a little bit about uh, cellular level, a little bit. Uh, sorry, you just, you see, I did not do talk away for a long time. <laughs> oh, and a little bit about tissue level and how mathematics works here. Yeah. First, about single cell. Like when we talk about a single cell, then uh, people describe single cells by systems of ordinary differential equations. If you heard such name Hodgkin and Huxley, I don't know, maybe if you have a course of biophysics, Hodgkin and Huxley to purchased from uh, Cambridge University, got Nobel Prize in 1952 by developing a first model of nerve cell, and then similar models were developed for cardiac cells, also for British, a very famous British scientist, Dennis Nobel, who was uh, still working in Oxford University. And uh, these models work in, in the following way. So this is a typical uh, solution to this model. This is how uh, response of single cardiac cell looks in the course of time. So here you have time, here you have a voltage, transmembrane voltage of the cell, here approximately such shape. And why this uh, shape uh, is such and why it changes? This is because voltage from this membrane changes. What, you, what can change what? Current, yes, we need to have current. 
uh, therefore voltage is changing because there are currents, uh, ion currents which are present on the membrane of this cycle of cell. These currents are just proteins with very special properties. So similar currents are also in nerve cells, in many, many other cells in our organism. There are such fine currents. And uh, these currents, uh, uh, like uh, uh, channels for these currents, can be open and closed, and we have uh, some time kinetics in it. And as a result of this process, time kinetics, we have such action potential. What is interesting? It turns out that these ion channels basically are main targets of all cardiac drugs. So when people take cardiac drug, what they actually do? This drug is in most of the cases just a blocker of one of these ion channels. In addition to it, maybe you heard about mutations in some people which lead to sudden cardiac death. So normally they call it ONCP syndrome and some other syndromes, and these uh, people in this family usually die around 20 years old, etc. But then when people start to study uh, the, the genetics of these uh, individuals, they found that they also have uh, uh, mutations in DNA, uh, which cause these ion channels, and therefore in these people, they also have modified ion channels, and because of that, Form of this action potential becomes abnormal, and uh, this results, for example, in unfortunate events in this situation. Um, in our models, properties of these ion channels can be very accurately measured in experiments. There is the whole huge field how people measure it uh, using special uh, uh, methods, page clamps, and so on and so on. And therefore, what people do. Uh, they use this uh, uh, they use uh, measurements of, of this ion channel, put them into their model, and then they can create a model, a silicon model, which produces a real cell. And then using this model, you are able then what to study effects of a drug and even to study effects of mutations on individual patients, just by modifying the, your model. Recorded some measurements, which were done relatively. This became a very big area of research. Uh, so, uh, uh, this research direction was started again quite a long time ago, uh, around 2000, by Dennis Noble in Oxford, uh, who uh, actually put forward uh, this idea, but later on, this research was developed in, uh, uh, in many groups. Uh, I think most of them are still originated in Oxford, but now there are uh, two uh, very big groups uh, in UK. One in Oxford University uh, at computer science department by Blanca Rodriguez, who studies uh, 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 this research, and one by Gary Nurk in Nottingham. I think he also has a very big lab who studied it. But what they actually do, uh, I think you already uh, can understand. So how it works? As I told you, if you have a model of cardiac cell, it has this ion channel, uh, which could as an equation. Then if we, for example, have a drug, which we want to study what effect this drug will have on cardiac activity. Then uh, this drug goes to some experimental group who studies what will be effect of this drug on ion channels, which are present here. And here, for example, uh, one of the tables, how these measurements are done, for example, they use one drug and the other one or some other drug, and study how this drug, for example, changes the conductivity of uh, one type of channel, like, uh, like some other channel, other channels, and so on. And then when they measure it, people can put it back to a model and then study what can happen. But actually, what can happen in the cell? You cannot have normally a in the cell. But here, there is another quite interesting mechanical question, uh, which is shown here. It turns out that in cardiac cells, normally you have such a response, just what we call single action potential, such a response. But in some abnormal conditions, 
you may have like a, a, instead of one response, response with two maxima, three maxima, and so on. And you can even have a periodic response. You have just one stimulus, and you have a periodic response here, which lasts forever. And mathematically, it means actually copy duplication. And it turns out that this copy duplication, but this is what we call a dumb translation, is a huge problem in pharmacology and in uh, cardiology, because in medical language, it's called, called EAD, early after depolarization. And what people after, when they put all this uh, information into this uh, model and start studying, they want to study in which conditions they would have the depreciations, in which conditions they would have this uh, like activity. And if it happens, then it's very bad. The drug should be stopped, and then uh, it should be resolved, and so on and so on. And also, what is also interesting for me, how to do it just uh, uh, yet, uh, I, I, I just don't know. I kind of I was living in the pain, but I want to go uh, and uh, I did not see a forecast of weather in the pain, how they do. But in our country, in the Netherlands, they normally do the following: they show you how weather would change during the two weeks period as the sun curves. But they show not one curve, but they show many curves, and they say that there are many different models, and this model prevents the whole cloud of the solution, and they say, okay, the frequency will go high, but there is such spread here, such spread here. And exactly the same people do in cardiac modeling, where they use not only a single model for cardiac cell, but they use many models. Now there are more than, I think, two or three hundred models which are uh, developed uh, in uh, Market, uh, there is a, a website called CLML where they are present, and they really try to model the effect of all the drugs using all the models. Uh, they uh, compute cloud of different uh, predictions, and based on that, they try to predict what happens in the uh, in, uh, in, in real patients and so on. And uh, yeah, what, what, what I would say that it's uh, in principle it's uh, it's working. Like uh, I have friends who are working at the FDA in the United States, and they seriously consider model as one of steps in the uh, development of this drug. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so this is one of the tools, and uh, you now we have many of those like stem cells, other things, etc. Uh, but here, yeah, the next is quite interesting, and also believe me, again, just uh, to you and maybe to some people to listen us. That uh, if people study like uh, the application theory, etc., the limitation theory, there are a lot of unsolved questions and a lot of comments. Good. Now, my second story, completely complete, which called Romanian geometry of the heart. By the way, like, do you know what is Romanian geometry of the heart? Yeah, oh, 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 okay, just a lot of amazing advice. Uh, kind of uh, symbols, but uh, like it's uh, like a very simple uh, uh, explanation of what it is and how it applies to cardiac modeling, but it's still, it's still my manager. Okay. Uh, maybe just to make it a bit bigger. Yeah. What I show here is a, a spread of excitation in the heart. Okay, like normally excitation uh, spreads with the same velocity, but you of course a need, and you know that in need, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, but uh, anyway, in need, you probably know that in need, you have fibers. And the same fibers are present in the heart muscle. So it's the same muscle like right? heart as the other. And this is, uh, and it has what we call an isotropy. That when you have these fibers and you want to initiate weight in the heart muscle, it propagates faster along these fibers and so across these fibers. Therefore, uh, there is uh, what we call an isotropy. But now, uh, like uh, when looking to this anisotropy, 
actually when he was working in the pay like in the I think in 2004, around that period of time, I was interested in such problems. Okay, when we talk about arrhythmias, arrhythmias, these are abnormalities of wave propagation inside the heart. Yes. Therefore, it would be interesting to understand what happens with waves in the heart. Or if I reformulate it slightly differently, it's not important how I see heart with my eyes, but it's more important how propagating waves can see heart when it propagates. As if I sit on a globe like this circle, and want to understand like what I see, what is going on. And if I would do it uh, when you're just traveling on a train, etc., what you care is about time. You don't care about distance, like when you're in Buddhist train in Japan or in very small train in Scotland. Uh, <laughs> it made a big difference, but uh, your perception just depends on uh, uh, like your perception of time. Okay, now I will start reading the point. Okay, we have a heart and we have a fiber in, in, in that heart. So uh, along fibers, I propagate very fast. But if I go across the fiber, then I go very slow. And how does it go nice in such a way that if you have a myocardial wall, then in this myocardial wall, uh, uh, even when you go across the wall, you normally go across the fiber and you go very, very slowly in that direction, but very fast in that direction. And therefore, it means that when you go across, your perception would be that you, your distance is longer than when you travel here. So I would say that somehow heart is short in that direction, but it's very long in transversal direction. And therefore, I was thinking, can you somehow recreate geometry of the heart, make completely new anatomy? And, uh, Think about not about the heart, how you see it by your eyes, but how your weight can move you. And then maybe it can give completely new way. And I really like, I remember at that time, I was thinking how to do it, even uh, try to do this cellular post models, for example, create the cell post models along the fibers and try to bump it in one direction to see how it changes genes, et cetera. But then somehow I found that what I'm doing is very, very stupid. I didn't learn mathematics at university. And this, what I tried to do, this is called a classical problem in mathematics, which is called embedding of Riemannian space. Like, what it means, just maybe just a few steps ahead. Like, uh, what I was telling you about waves and how it travels and about time which takes uh, for waves to go from here to here. In a way, this is slightly similar. It's like what, but this is uh, like what, for example, Einstein was doing in special theory of relativity. Uh, because he thought, okay, uh, uh, I need just to travel distance by uh, speed of light, etc., in different directions, and so on. And therefore, what you do with that thing, you just really want to describe your arrival time. As some kind of metric in your space. Of course, we know our metric in Euclidean space, which is just Pythagorean theorem, theorem like x squared plus y squared gives the distance. But here, it is uh, 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 slightly different. And, and then uh, uh, there is a huge part of mathematics, which is called like uh, differential geometry, in which you measure uh, distance completely differently like extension of Pythagorean theorem, and then uh, like your distance should be measured using so-called metric sampler, like which can have some general thing. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, this space by itself may have a lot of interesting properties. For example, uh, this Riemannian space, may have its curvature. So like, uh, I just know, uh, it, it's like maybe hard to say, but maybe you heard that in, in uh, general theory of relativity, they tell that light 
propagates not along a straight line. It propagates a little bit in a curved space because they say what gravitation is doing is just curves our space. So there is a curvature of this space. By the way, like GPS now uses this uh, curvature of the space in order to locate your eyes from satellite. Okay, okay. Uh, and, uh, and then what we see here, if I tell, okay, I want to look on the heart with the help of this, like either cross, then my arrival time at the distance, then I will get a, a remaining space in the heart. And what I would like to do, I would like to tell you how wave will look to this space. This is what people call embedding problem. They want to uh, map your remaining space to uh, Euclidean space, and then it uh, has sort of like, for example, put a lot of points, then you map them, and then uh, all these points will have the same like geometry as in Riemannian space, you measure distances the same. And the problem is that this Riemannian space embedded is impossible to do. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, uh, like, uh, so how to like how how in mathematics all this like it's possible, but it's possible in higher dimensional space. If you go, for example, three-dimensional uh, car and, and it's a Romanian manifold and you want to uh, extend it to higher, then it will be higher space. But I mean I don't want to say how to explore it in five dimensional space, it doesn't help me anymore. Therefore, yeah. But still it uh, brought me uh, in contact with really great mathematicians, like really without doubt, best, best in the world. And I spent quite a while at uh, like uh, this institute, institute of uh, like uh, chess in France, where Fields Medal winner was in the top five. And I, I was working with also very, uh, was uh, like a privilege to talk with very famous uh, mathematician with from our origin, Professor Broman, who is a world leader in the Google science uh, uh, on uh, uh, Romanian geometry. And we really started to talk with him and initiated uh, a new look to what I was talking about this uh, Romanian geometry of the heart, etc. And uh, then uh, uh, a result of that, uh, a paper was uh, published. So maybe I don't think it is this uh, one of In PLF, like again, some while ago, when we really started to describe heart as a, as a reunion, uh, 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 as a reunion uh, manifold. And then we already found a few like uh, interesting results. And again, I want to show the very elementary uh, level one of them. Like uh, this is a typical pattern of anisotropy of, of the heart. So uh, if you have the heart and if you just cut it a different depth of cardiac tissue, you will find that fibers have different directions. And you have like rotation of the fiber. When you go through the thickness of the fiber, you have rotation of the fiber. Quite big, it can be like 150, 180 degrees. And this is type of anisotropy, which in the Riemannian sense, generates a curvature to your space. And then what we did, we just computed a uh, Riemannian like curvature of the space and found some formula, blah, blah, blah. But what was important that this curvature of this uh, Riemannian space in the heart turns out to be negative. What does it mean? Look, as I told you, our Euclidean space has zero curvature. Therefore, two parallel curves never cross. However, if you have a positive curvature, then two geodesic in this method, we we'll try to converge to each other. But if you have negative curvature, what uh, you have in the heart, then this geodetics will diverge from each other. And what we found that this result to create this negative curvature basically means that this uh, rotation of the fiber tries to make uh, to make propagation 
very efficient. So it really wants to spread it as fast as possible to higher depth. And this we showed using this Riemannian geometry, and this in some way was explanation of usefulness of this rotation of uh, uh, and uh, like and uh, what I want to tell that uh, work in this direction still continues to have a uh, few papers in the uh, like uh, one of papers written in June, but anyway, we we applied it to find some. Uh, uh, this is that is not a good one, but here there is one very important and unsolved problem. Therefore, just you and me, people to listen, which is really very crucial for, for, for this stuff. And we also discussed it uh, several times with Professor Zola. And this is the problem what is curvature? You know, that curvature is a second derivative. Of your distance. Okay, when you have a smooth function, then taking second derivative, yeah, easier just take the second derivative, blah, blah, blah. But arc is not a continuous space. Arc consists of cells, of single cells. Therefore, it has some discrepancy. And therefore, it's extremely important question what would be curvature? If your space is discrete, how you introduce it, and what then this curvature will be in reality. So what I showed you here, this formula for curvature, of course, we're considering that we have a continuous function which represents our vector. But if not, uh, it's not, and then how understood uh, from Professor Gromov that this is still unsolved question, and it would be very interesting to think about that. Okay. So, uh, one more story, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and now I want to also give you an example of another uh, line of research, which also closely related to really fundamental mathematical research. Yeah. And it has some sort of like fibrosis and cardiac disease. Like, what is fibrosis? You know, that if, for example, you cut uh, uh, skin, cut skin, or you have like skin, etc. Then after a while, uh, it will be uh, like, uh, treated. But why is treated? That there are some special cells which are called fibroblasts, which can travel in our body to, to that part, and then they somehow kill your uh, like. When there is any type of inflammation, uh, uh, then this uh, fibroblast uh, 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 travel to this region of inflammation, and then they stay there, they give, uh, uh, produce some special uh, proteins like um, collagen and so on and so on. Inflammation, of course, can happen in the heart due to hundreds of diseases. For example, one of the very bad reasons is a viral uh, inflammation of the heart, for example, during COVID. And uh, it can be due to other types of viral disease. Uh, and then it can, uh, for example, produce such a, a disease, which is called neuroischemic cardiac myopathy, uh, which is a very, very bad disease. It's not critical. Uh, good that it happens very, very rare. But again, we don't know. Uh, and what is this disease about? That in front of this patient, you have not only excitable cells, but you have a lot of these inexcitable cells, fibroblasts, which are shown here, for example, yellow is normal cells, and red are these fibroblasts, and they spread there by very complex pattern. And then uh, you don't know what to do, because how you can remove cells if you cannot just give a pill and give the cells to and, and therefore, and you have, uh, when the patient has infarction of myocardium, infarction of myocardium is uh, that a, a part of heart doesn't uh, receive blood anymore, and then uh, this part dies, and then, of course, you have a lot of fibroblasts, lot of fibrosis, and around this also puts a lot of arrhythmias. Uh, when people become old, 
uh, young children that are not almost no fiber particles to do the ability to become older and older, there are much more fiber particles, and this patient uh, people also have often Therefore, this is one of the most important and most known uh, conditions is uh, this uh, presence of this uh, 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 but then, like in mathematical sense or in general scientific sense, you have a problem. Okay, for example, you have a slice of the heart of the patient, and you can visualize where you have normal subjects, where you have a hyperglass. Then, the question is can you just look to this uh, slice and say, is it uh, arithmetic or not? Will person die if you have such a uh, uh, or, or not. And nowadays you can also do it uh, without histology. You can do different types of uh, MRI scans and some other uh, invasive things. But what it means for us for mathematicians, what we know uh, that waves can propagate good. What are fibroblasts? Fibroblasts are cells which cannot be excited by waves. Therefore, they are just inexcitable obstacles to this way. Therefore, in mathematical sense, probably what we have is wave propagation. Oh, I don't know, like on the sea shore, there was wave and a lot of ropes around it. And you want to see whether these ropes will give you turbulence or wave will just propagate. And this is very complex and still not solved problem. And amazing, we know amazingly little about it. We have only many examples where I say, okay, here we get, here we don't have, but still we have no generalization how to explain it from first principle and to go further to it. And I would like to tell you about our attempt, how we, we try to quantify. Uh, so, like for me, this story about this particular uh, start with a pair of paper from uh, Sergio Alonso and Marcus Bart. Sergio actually spent half a year with me in the lead, but as this paper was published after he already was back to Germany, it's on its own. And they were also interested in that, step, in that uh, idea. What they did, they did just a very simple They put a small region in a uh, virtual target tissue where they put a lot of these inexcitable cells, inexcitable obstacles. They were sending waves which were propagating here. They just was trying to find in which condition, for which pattern, that they will get formation of vortices here. And what they found, uh, they found that uh, uh, you have such kind of bell-shaped function. What is this function about? Like here, you have percentage of fibrosis, percentage of inexcitable cells in the field of uh, excitable cells. Like 50% means half of all cells are excitable, half of all cells are inside. And P is the probability of arrhythmia occur for this percentage of cells. And they found uh, that um, it has a like, bell shape, which means that if you have a lower percentage of fibrosis, you have no arrhythmia. If you have very high percentage of fibrosis, also no arrhythmia, but there is some intermediate uh, value where they occur. And second thing, what they found uh, uh, was the following. They found that somehow this bell-shaped uh, function, or its maximum, or the, is very close to so-called percolation threshold. What is percolation threshold? Percolation is also one of classical problems in mathematics, uh, which means uh, in our interpretation, for example, you have a medium. And in this medium, you have, for us, for example, excitable cells and inexcitable cells. And you initiate a wave from one boundary, and you want to understand whether this wave will be able to propagate to another boundary of the tissue. Because obviously, if you have a lot of inexcitable cells, then there will be no way of wave to go through. It will be blocked. 
Also, percolation again is one of classical problems in the physics. Like uh, one uh, scientist, like uh, Professor uh, Smirnov, also got a Fields medal a few years ago about some results in percolation. Therefore, it's really, really oh, of course, uh, he didn't work with perverse, etc. There are some specific mathematical equations, but this is also very really interesting. But what uh, Bar and uh, Alonso did after that, they tried to explain, but why do we have this belt shape here? Why, for, why uh, uh, it grows and then goes to here? Such an example is tau and perimodus. This is just parameters of model. So they, they, uh, you, have, uh, you can have just different uh, uh, number of recyclable cells. But then you may also have different properties of the tissue. This amplitude of your bill depends on this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Probability depends on the because it depends on its uh, roughly speaking sensibility of your tissue. Because if it is uh, like, uh, you know, if it is a slow, low excitable, then it's easier to break size. It's just for example, these are radius of uh, this uh, uh, radius of this uh, spot. And uh, again, uh, I, again, I uh, can obviously say that if radius is higher, then it's a higher probability. If it's very small, it's a But still, it's always question. Yeah? Okay, and now comes to play this mathematics, which I thought was my better uh, first slide. Remember that in order to exist, the part of the wave will be longer than something. It should be bounded from below. And therefore, uh, they did the flow. They told. Okay, now let us consider just a pure mathematical problem. I just put black points on my uh, uh, white plane. Of course, if they're just very far from each other, you have just one here, one here, one here, one here. They have more, more, more. They start to create a cluster. And then you start to think, what will be the perimeter of these clusters each other? And then uh, they want to find out now, what will be the probability if you just put a lot of these black points? What will be the probability to have a cluster with perimeter longer than this L? And it's obvious uh, that if you have a uh, like very low percentage of fibrosis, it's zero. If you have a lot of black cells, it will be a hundred percent. And then you will have like some fields function which will grow so it will be such function. Okay, good. But then they told okay, but this is only part of the story that you need to have this cluster. Second thing, wave can still be able to propagate to the other end. It should be below the percolation threshold. Because look, but it's also very closely related problem because it's huge that you have a cluster. And this cluster is so big that it goes through all medium. The wave cannot pass through this one. Therefore, they told you need two events together. One probability to have this uh, uh, cluster for longer, yeah. And second probability that you don't get the percolation. To get the percolation, you have also kills curve. But not to have percolation, you need to take one minus this curve, and then these two events are just multiplied, and we get obviously a branch expansion. They expand this, you get something like that. And therefore, they were able to explain it positively and then say, okay, this is a, uh, we explained the percolation threshold, and this is how it was. It was a definite score. Okay, and then uh, with me, for a while, 
was the contact in uh, a person like uh, uh, Kama. Uh, he is uh, 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 when we were working on this particular project, he was working on faculty in the United States, but he's originally from Iran, and he is like Basti's daughter, uh, uh, born uh, Silva Medal from Walter Lindberg in physics or particles. So it's very, very bright guy. Uh, and, uh, uh, like, and he was certainly like such a can you like study something about the world is from this from the field and find something in that field? And then he started to look in more details to that paper of what uh, uh, Marcus and Sergio did and started to see some differences. So, first thing, what he found, like he was doing like put weight and then see in which state you can get this kind of situation. But then he was interested. Okay, Alonso told that waves should rotate around the cluster. And when he started to look to region where it flowed, he did not find just one cluster. He found that here you may have several clusters which are disjoint from each other. They are not physically connected. But still, in terms of wave propagation, they are connected because wave cannot go through this small gap. And therefore, he thought, okay, I already see that I can extend paper uh, by a lot, by telling, no, you should not count for normal cluster, you should count for functional cluster. Okay, good. But on the other hand, I would say it's not a big deal. Yeah, okay. Like, uh, I, I, I think it's more or less obvious. It's just a question how you count your connectivity. Therefore, it's not a big uh, uh, advantage. But then we started to think with him, and we really wanted to do some considerable steps forward. And then we came back to uh, basics. So this formula we already knew that you must have a, a side longer than the wave. But there is a question. This is what you need in order for your uh, uh, vortex to exist. But what you need to do in order to induce the vortex. Because if you just have this uh, hole, it's not enough for what why in the first place this vortex would occur at this place? And then we come to a problem, how this vortex can be reduced. And then we come to a concept of so-called unidirectional group, which is very well known in cardiac electric theory, and this is very easy to explain. Look, now I have the same ring, but now I put some additional path from here and here, as if I have such an anatomical structure in, in the heart, and we want to understand how can I induce uh, this rotation there. And of course, if I just initiate wave here, it will spread here, it will spread here, then this wave will collide, will flow down, I will get no rotation. Therefore, in order to get this rotation, I need to have some break of symmetry. And break of symmetry is called what? Assume that now we have some pressure that we go here and this wave propagates without any problem. But this wave propagates and somehow it is blocked here. Already good. But also still not enough. Because okay, if it is just blocked here, then this wave will propagate again to this exit point, we go here, but then it will be also possible for this wave to travel here and we will come back to this point. And if it will be also blocked here, I will gain nothing because the wave will just disappear and I will again don't get the surface. But it may happen that it can be unidirectional blow. It's like some uh, asymmetry in your system. That wave can propagate to this direction, it cannot, cannot propagate in this direction, but can propagate in this direction. And then all will be good because this wave will be blocked, it comes from here to go here, and then it will get the surface. So you can say, okay, but what I told is so blah blah blah, but is it realistic? 
As it turns out, this is completely realistic and in very, very simple systems. And these systems, again, are very well studied in neurophysiology, very, very simple systems, which means that if, for example, we have a fiber, and a radius of this fiber abruptly increases, abruptly changes this, and then becomes very, very simple. What happens? We have a way which we get along this fiber, and what we tell each next period of time, it needs to excite the same amount of tissue, bam, bam, bam. But if it expands immediately, then the small amount of tissue, you need to excite a bigger amount of tissue. And then it can fail because you have the same current, but a larger tissue, then it still comes present, and then it can stop. But if you travel in the other direction, from wider region to small, you have no problem at all. It's even better. Because you have a lot of current which now focused to a small area and then can forget to that further. Therefore, we basically see that in such conditions we may easily have unidirectional block. But this is also very close to what we're talking about psychosis, because you have like very complex pathways, and they of course can have different uh, thickness, and then we can expect these things here. And therefore, what we started to look with him not only looking to a, a geometric uh, life of yeah, but also to this rejection I just uh, should see it, but maybe I'll just try to fix the slide. To, uh, yeah. just, uh, like in a very short all works, but I need to show you a few slides. Like, again, like what we did, we just characterize all of this block. We see, uh, for example, here you may have like weight which uh, block in this direction, but then put it here. And um, Farhad did, did a lot of studies and found this injection block. Uh, he, he was able to find distributions of this block and so on. And, so on. and uh, what was also interesting to me, maybe just have a look to this uh, uh, graph. It shows like unidirectional block as a solid line and all bidirectional, all blocks uh, by this line. Very unexpectedly for me personally, it turned out to be that most of blocks would be found. But only direction. It's very rare to have blood from that and from that, and most of the cases that were really this energy. And then how we collected all this together. So like we thought, okay, now we're already close. We know what size is, we know what block is, and now we want to collect and get a good uh, probability. But then what should we do? Look to this simple case. For example, we have this figure, we have a channel inside it. And for example, here already have a unidirectional block. What should be perimeter? This part or this part, because waves can propagate here and propagate here. And here we decided that we need to use minimal from this perimeter, because uh, if you have minimal of this perimeter, this would be matter, because if wave is close here, this block can propagate from this direction, and then when wave comes here, it's not going to Therefore, Look, one more competition. You need to count unidirectional blocks. You need to count also uh, this minimum functional cluster in such a way. And the last thing what you need to do, because waves can come not only directly to a channel, but go from a little bit from a side, then delay of this break will be uh, less than the uh, full perimeter, coefficient alpha, and then we found that this alpha most likely to be 0.5 just from the simple distribution. And with that, this is our final solution. It's very simple. Which means that what now, in order to tell what is probability of formation of arrhythmias here, follow us to this equation. That perimeter of this minimum functional cluster this alpha equals 0.5 is longer than that wavelength which was obtained from the And when we did it, we finally found uh, this very nice thing. So these are our like uh, uh, mass simulations, and these are our predictions, and they were working pretty pretty good. And therefore, indeed, we found that our view on this problem, as counting of minimum functional cluster and comparing with the wavelength really allows us not only quantitatively, but quantitatively to predict 
about the future of this research. Because if you know how exactly and where exactly these resources occur, you potentially can find it from analysis of geometry of the structure and then do uh, like intervention at this particular point and then like in fact it is eight patients. Okay, so then maybe I will talk too long if you don't have time for the next question. Sorry, but yeah, so how many people do We have five people. We don't have to Yeah. 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 Well, I don't, have, I don't ask one question. So when you were talking about this Riemann uh, curvature, you said that Riemann curvature is negative. Yeah. yeah. On the other hand, I believe it depends on geometry of fibers. So but this was when you have a like select, mm. just uh, like, uh, and then you can only repeat. Suppose certain kind of select yeah. geometries. What my question would be if, can you, can you claim that it will be negative for whatever the presentations are exchanging? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I think so. It's stronger if you would say that if whatever. No, no, no. I think it can be positive, it can be negative. Because look, all what I was talking about by process, when you have, for example, uh, Expansion of the part. You can also look to this also slightly differently. You have fibers which go to this direction, and then fibers will go to this direction. So basically, you have just jump in your diffusion coefficient in your equation. Yeah. Then you can also have a, a stop of your wave propagating in one direction and propagation to the other direction. And therefore, in that case, uh, you will have a yeah, but, but, but look, um, like, but, but this is also one of very interesting questions which we discussed a lot with uh, Professor Gromov. Uh, this is also beyond of my understanding. But uh, what is Riemann uh, uh, geometry, Riemann metric, that when you measure distance from A to B and from B to A, that it is the same in the Riemann matrix. But in our case, it may be not the same because of uh, because if you propagate here, like in direction of work, in one direction can propagate part, in other direction can propagate different. Therefore, you may have here, even in some cases, asymmetric matrix. It's like yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, like here. Yeah. And then maybe you need to use different matrix. I think they were telling me it's called like Finsler metric, etc. But I don't know what it means. But, but, uh, but, but, but in a way, it's like very, very, very interesting because like when you talk with mathematicians who work with geometry, uh, they basically call all our effects as a geometry. So the, the, all dynamics can be represented as some type of geometry. And therefore it's like quite interesting. Uh, approach and, and uh, really, I, I don't know whether you have possibility to talk with people from different backgrounds. I kind of uh, luckily have possibility on one hand to talk with pure mathematicians, 
the both of us clinical doctor, you really feel very, very different uh, uh, like uh, view on the same thing. And uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it really gives you, in, in some cases, a really very, very special gift just if you don't feel just like so. Because maybe you don't understand what they're telling to you, but in, in, if you must, and yes, it can, it can be done. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. 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 Thank you.